Kicking off the list at number 10, Glow in the Dark Shark. Yeah, you thought Left Shark was the coolest fish in the pond? Think again, pal. Glow in the Dark Sharks, apparently we got them. Terrifying. Two years ago, scientists were able to identify three deep sea sharks. The kite fin, the black belly lantern, and the southern lantern shark. All three of them look like they're from Pandora. They're glowing. They're literally glowing. Bioluminescence is fascinating. We mentioned the deep sea angler fish in part one of this list. So now we've got glowy Gil Gary over here to worry about. Awesome, I'm never swimming again. These sharks were found in the twilight zone, around 1,000 meters deep off the coast of New Zealand. Yep, never swimming again, ever again. Let's move on. In our number nine spot today, we have this underwater knocking. This knocking sound was picked up by an underwater hydrophone, and for a while it had people stumped until they were able to find the culprit. Before we talk about what this sound is coming from, imagine being in the deep, dark, icy waters and hearing that sound. It is straight up out of a horror movie, but as it turns out, the real source isn't quite as scary. This is actually the sound of a species of haddock fish. These types of haddock are a ray finned fish that can be found in the North Atlantic Ocean. The males of the species will produce this drumming or pulsating sound in order to attract mates during the mating season. Outside of the mating season, a similar sound is also produced, and that is known to be used during a aggressive encounters with other male fish. In our number 8 spot today we have the 52 Hertz whale. This whale has been nicknamed the loneliest whale in the world, but the truth is, we don't even really know if that's true because we've never actually seen it. This whale, which we don't know if it's male or female or what whale species it belongs to, sings its song like no other whale does. This whale was first heard in 1989 on a hydrophone, and while the calls were most similar to that of a blue whale, there was one striking difference and that was the frequency of the calls. This whale calls at 52 hertz with regular blue whales calling between 10 and 40 hertz. Even fin whales are usually heard at 20 hertz, so it left everyone stumped as to what could be going on here. A researcher named Bill Watkins dedicated his life to trying to reveal what exactly was going on here, and while he passed away in 2004, he found that this whale was not only unusual, but totally unique. The biggest challenge is the fact that we cannot locate this whale. Their calls can be heard for hundreds of miles and trying to find one single whale in the vastness of the ocean is next to impossible. Many people have suggested that perhaps the whale is deaf, and this is what has led to its unique song, but of course without the whale, how would we possibly know for sure? In our number 7 spot today we have Slow Down. Slow Down is another sound that was captured in 1997, but this one was captured on May 19th of that year. The 90s was apparently the height of the capturing weird unexplained ocean sounds wave because wow, there are so many. This sound got its name because of the fact that the sound descends in frequency over about 7 minutes. Again, this is another sound I would have just assumed was ghosts, but luckily there are people out there who know more than me who continue to research these things and try to get to the bottom of these mysteries. This sound was so loud it was detected by different sensors nearly 5,000 kilometers apart from each other. Scientists were able to locate the sound as coming from somewhere off the Antarctic Peninsula. While they couldn't directly find the source of the sound, they used their deductive reasoning and it is currently believed that the sound might have been the result of a drifting iceberg as it scratched the sea floor until it slowly came to a stop. I guess the icebergs were just moving around a lot in the mid to late 90s. In our number 6 spot today we have the Psy Whale. Here we are again with another whale sound that just truly doesn't seem like it should be the sound coming out of any living creature, but hey, in the sea the rules are just different and everything's a little weirder. These whales can be found in subtropical, temperate and subpolar waters around the world. They are sadly a species that has seen their numbers decrease rapidly, especially due to the historical commercial whaling that took place in the 19th and 20th centuries. The exact number of these whales that currently exist is unknown, but they are a species that is currently listed as being threatened. Like many other whales, these guys use their voice to communicate with one another, and that is where this sound comes from.
Other than the sound that they're making, the increase in noise under the water, especially man made noise, is actually a threat to their existence. The sound can interrupt their normal behavior and drive them away from areas that are important to their survival. And sometimes intense exposure to noise can even cause one of these whales to strand and die, which truly is just awful. In our number five spot today, we have Star Wars. Okay, you might be wondering why something relating to Star Wars is on this list since we are talking about the sea, but just listen to the sound and then tell me what you think. That sounds kind of like little fighter jets or something, right? Well, it definitely had some people stumped for a while when it was first heard, but luckily this one has a fairly simple and harmless explanation. The Star Wars sound is actually coming from dwarf mink whales. Apparently, a lot of strange ocean noises end up either being attributed to whales or icebergs. Considering how creepy this sound can be when they have no explanation, I'm kind of glad to know that most things end up being relatively harmless and way less scary in reality. In our number four spot today, we have the Atlantic Cod. Atlantic Cod are known for their ability to produce clicks, growls, and thumps as their way of communicating. The clicks I'm about to show you are apparently intended to ward off potential predators, including humans, and I truly feel like it might be working. While this sound was recorded on a hydrophone, it's been said that divers who have encountered these fish in the ocean have also been able to hear these warning clicks so as to let them know not to get close. These fish also of course have different less aggressive sounds as well that they use for things like mating season or to be able to warn others of their kind of potential dangers that are lurking in the icy waters. In our number 3 spot today we have the ping. This is a sound that no one has been able to figure out where it is coming from. I'll admit this one wasn't captured by a submarine, but I had to include it because it is coming from the water and it is so mysterious that scientists and even the military still aren't sure what exactly is going on here. This sound can be heard in the Kikitalik region of the Canadian territory Nunavut and is coming from the Fury and Hecla Strait. This sound has been described by some as a ping and by others as a hum, but the main issue is that this area is a hunting area and whatever the sound is, it is scaring off all of the wildlife. Because of the reports of this mysterious sound, even the military came to investigate, but still, no one is exactly sure where this sound could have been coming from or what it could be linked to. For now, the mysteries that lay below the Arctic ice are destined to remain a secret. In our number two spot today, we have hmm. This sound is one that was captured on a hydrophone, and it truly sounds like someone just trying to add some infliction to their voice to ask a question. I'll give you one second to take a guess first. Did you guess another whale? Well, you'd be right then. This sound is coming from the North Atlantic right whale and is not just the sound of a super confused person. These whales are one of the world's endangered large whale species with there being only 400 left in the Atlantic Ocean. The sound you just heard is the sound they use to communicate with others of their species. Their sounds are usually low frequency moans or groans and they are used to indicate things like warnings, contact, aggression, or just other social signals in general. In our number one spot today we have boom. Okay, maybe the last one was a little too easy so here's another sound that I'm gonna let you guess and maybe it will be a little harder this time. Do you have a guess as to what that big boom was? Apparently that sound was caught on a hydrophone and it is coming from an underwater oil rig. Remember when we were talking about the man-made sound pollution of the deep sea and how it affects the marine life? This is exactly the kind of thing we were talking about. I don't have the solution on how to make it better or how to fix the problem. All I know is that it is one and honestly, how could it not be? That sound freaked me out while I was sitting comfortably at my desk researching, so I can imagine hearing it when I wasn't expecting it in the comfort of my own home. That just sounds awful. Kicking off the list at number 10, Titan's Ocean. Yeah, we'll start this list with an ocean signal out of this world. I mean that in a literal sense. This first one comes from Thanos' home planet, Titan. Yeah, it's one of Saturn's many moons. Saturn has 82 moons in total, so if you were a werewolf and you lived on Saturn, odds are you'd be pretty exhausted. 
Around 10 years ago, NASA's Cassini spacecraft detected water inside the shell of ice that is that moon. That's pretty exciting. Also, water in space anywhere is exciting, but also I'm like, mm, aliens, they're coming. To quote a Cassini team member, the search for water is an important goal in solar system exploration, and now we've spotted another place where it's abundant. Abundant, did you hear that? It's abundant, nice. We love abundant sea creatures resting on the moon Titan. NASA has detected low frequency radio waves on Saturn's icy moon, and it sounds pretty eerie. To know this is off planet entirely, if there's water involved, I don't wanna hear any space whales. I'm all set. Number nine, the frilled shark. Another scary shark, awesome. Back in 2004, marine biologists discovered this dinosaur, the frilled shark, if you wanna call it a shark, okay. It was lurking about 870 meters below the surface. This one looks like an eel, Almost. It's so scary looking. Oh, I hate this. I hate the ocean. Frilled sharks can grow up to seven feet long and they fight like daredevil. They can hunt in complete darkness. They don't need to see anything to whoop your ass. Remember that next time you're uh, skinny dipping. Mm -hmm. Unless you can hold your breath for a seriously long time, you won't run into the frilled shark anytime soon. They're only found about a mile below the surface, so sleep swimmingly tonight. Number eight. Black dragonfish. All of these fish are so scary looking, and no, not all of these things are fish. Just a few off the hop, because, ooh, get them out of the way. The black dragonfish is the first time scientists have found an ultra black deep sea fish. This thing is awesome, I love this. The black dragonfish literally has the word dragon in it, and I'm not surprised. He fits it, he fits the picture. These little guys can be found at depths of 1600 feet, and you'll see this one coming towards you, as these fish too possess bioluminescence. If you can't tell from these photos, um, they also have teeth. They have big, scary, dragon-like teeth. Even Khaleesi would see this and be like, no, no, I'm good. Number seven, Apollo 11. They say space and the ocean are pretty similar, but nobody expected to find this. The engines of the Saturn V rocket that fell off during the Apollo 11 missions. They should have never been found, realistically. The odds here are just mind-blowing. Right off coastal Florida waters found 16,000 feet below the ocean surface. These things are massive. They're so heavy we could barely get them out of the sea. You know who found this thing laying on the ocean floor for more than 40 years? Jeff Bezos. Yep, Amazon CEO Jeffrey Bezos. J bees. He found this. He found these back in 2012. What's the shipping fee for a couple of Apollo 11 rockets? It's probably not cheap. Number six, USS Johnson. Once a US Navy destroyer, the USS Johnson sank during the Battle of Samar back in 1944. It sank after a battle with a large fleet of Japanese warships. Victor Vescavo, one of the few to reach the Marianas Trench, was the first one to stumble upon the remains of this sunken warship. The remains were found quite recently, back in 2019, and it's now known as the deepest known shipwreck of all time, which is a weird brag. She was found 6,450 meters deep in the Philippine Sea in the Pacific Ocean. To quote Victor, who at the time was leading said expedition, he says, the wreck is so deep that there's very little oxygen down there. And while there is a little bit of contamination from marine life, it's remarkably well intact, except for the damage it took from the furious fight, end quote. The ship is so deep that it took them a handful of trips just to locate the thing entirely. There were 327 crew members on board the ship during the battle, and sadly, only 141 of them survived. The diving team was respectful about their mission, and they laid wreaths both before and after their dives, which is just a nice thing to note off at this point, honestly. Number five. Underwater civilization. As we found out in part one of this series, the ocean, being mostly undiscovered, is terrifying. Yep, never going in it again, for sure. But discovering a long lost civilization underwater, okay, I'll admit, that's not scary. That's actually kind of cool. It's pretty neat, we like those. Found 65 feet below sea level off the coast of Sweden. Researchers from Lund University found a Stone Age civilization that dates to around 9,000 years old. They found artifacts that are in great condition, all things considered. They even found an elk antler ax. How epic is that? That's some Elder Rings kind of stuff right there. That's some good loot. Some of these discoveries, they still have to work out. They're not even sure what they found. What researchers do know is that this ancient civilization, they had a healthy life based on what they found. There's lots of food, findings suggest that it was warm out often. It was great and all, you know, until the sea rose up and swallowed the Swedish lagoon. The forest surrounded lagoon just ceased to exist, and we're not really sure why. The more ocean we discover, the more we learn about our past. And if we can also find treasure along the way, that would that would be helpful, that'd be great. Number four, USS Nevada. The USS Nevada was lost in 1948, and it wasn't until a year ago where she was seen again. Yeah, the USS Nevada was referred to as the unsinkable ship, and here's why. During the 1941 attack on Pearl Harbor, the USS Nevada was the only battleship to get away in one piece. But 
Barely. It took years of repairs after that, but she returned to battle later in 1944 to support the Normandy invasion. A year later, it assisted in two atomic bomb tests, and post-World War II, she was finally deemed too ancient for service. So the Navy used the USS Nevada as target practice, and it took them five days and lots of power to finally sink it. How impressive is that? They almost couldn't sink the ship when they tried. That's kind of brilliant. The torpedo was the final strike, and after it sank, the Navy wasn't even sure where exactly it ended up. It was more than 15,000 feet below the surface, so it could have gone literally anywhere. Cut to only a couple years ago, a joint expedition by Ocean Infinity and Search Inc, led by Dr. James Delgado, they found her, just 65 nautical miles southwest of Pearl Harbor, all the way down. Number three, Amelia Earhart's plane. Yeah, you heard me. How epic is this? The first woman to fly across the Atlantic, she was well on her way to settling even more groundbreaking records, but her plane tragically disappeared over the Pacific in 1937. It's since been a great mystery where the final resting place of Amelia Earhart now is, but we may have actually found her remains back in 1940 on the Pacific island of Nikamuraro. The initial examination of these remains were reported to be that of a man. That was the general idea in 1941. But come 2018, we have a different idea now something's come up. Researcher Richard Jantz took another look at the long lost remains, and since then, photos of Amelia have surfaced, so Richard compared the bone measurements to her body type, and we're pretty sure that's her. But in a recent discovery, May 2021, a murky image went viral, and many believe it's Amelia Earhart's plane submerged in Nikumaroru Lagoon. Back in 1991, part of a plane fuselage was recovered, but it was too damaged to confirm that it was her plane from when it went down in 1937. Do you think it's her? Sound off below, I, I do, definitely. Or else someone else's remains are out there and that's also wild. Let's discover who that is. Number two, crop circles. Before we end off this list, we'll get a little cute, dare I say. Crop circles on the ocean floor. Are these aliens, alien fish? Do we have this now? Is this a scary shark? What's going on here? These crop circles were first spotted back in 1995 off the southern coast of Japan. And for 16 years, these things were blowing the minds of divers or deep sea explorers. Nobody knew where they were coming from. They would be there one week and then the next day would be gone. Tiny aliens or tiny puffer fish. That's right, in 2011, one of these dudes got caught in 4K, and it's one of the weirdest things I have ever seen. I had to squeeze it in some sort of deep sea list. I love showing this little guy off. These male puffer fish, they try and lure in the ladies by making art. Some birds dance like crazy, some fish make art, okay? Animals have souls, deal with it. The thing that baffles me here, con concerns me, if anything, is that these puffer fish use a shell. They use a shell in their mouth, they, um, they grab it, and then they scoop out these designs. He uses a tool to carve away his emotions. Small but mighty, and also an artist. And finally, number one, squid graveyard. During a 2012 expedition in the Gulf of California, lurking all the way at the bottom of the seafloor, scientists came across a bunch of squid carcasses and squid egg sheets, which I mean, you know, in your working day, that's a lot to see, just going along and all of a sudden you're like, oh, yikes, okay. But anywho, once they took photos, they got footage, all was good, they returned. Come 2015 though, that's when these deep dives get a little mysterious. When they returned to the exact same area, they found even more carcasses and even more squid egg sheets. What's going on? Why here? Is this like a hot spot? So many questions. Many species of squid will see the adults all join in large groups and lay clusters of eggs in the seafloor, but shortly after this, many of the adults will die. Nature is cruel. This is the case for most things. But it's not the case for every squid, however. There are some mothers who instead lay their eggs on an egg sheet, which they keep in between their arms for months. And when the babies finally hatch, the mother will then drift her way down to the seafloor. So this answers why that squid died, but it doesn't answer why there's so many bodies and so many types of squid births and stuff happening in one specific zone. And that answer still remains a mystery, hence why it's our number one today. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have the train. The train is a sound that was first recorded on March 5th, 1997. It is often referred to as the train because, well, it kind of sounds like a train's whistle or maybe like the sound of the wheels grinding against the tracks. But in my opinion, it just sounds like a ghost meetup. Despite the years it's been since this sound was captured, no one is entirely sure where it came from. The current belief is that it may have been from an extremely large iceberg in the Ross Sea near Cape Adair, but that is still only a guess. The steady hum might be the sound of the keel of an iceberg dragging across the sea floor. But what if it's not? Number nine, submarine propeller. When it comes to creepy sounds or signals heard from the ocean, here or out there, it really depends on who you ask if it's creepy or not. A submarine propeller firing up underwater to many is nothing. Just another day working on the Navy, if anything. But this guy with submechanophobia, the fear of big 
things underwater, the sound of a submarine propeller firing up is absolutely haunting. My palms are literally sweating just reading this. The noise of the propeller is traceable, but the sonar, that can mess up some whales. Sonar underwater is so loud you can feel it through your entire body. It's definitely not something you want to witness up close. It's like standing near the speaker at a club. Your bones just feel it. Take a listen. Take a listen. Also, a little headphone warning. It's kind of, it's exactly what you expect. Number eight, slow down. Not to be confused with Slow Ride, that's an absolute banger from the 70s. Slow Down was recorded on May 19th, 1997, so a little bit later. It was picked up in the equatorial Pacific Ocean, just in the middle of literally nowhere. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration picked it up not once, but several times every year. Our best guess as to what this sound is, perhaps it's moving ice in Antarctica. But the fascinating part here is that this sound decreases in frequency over time. It takes about seven minutes in total, so we can't include the entire clip or else you'd be pretty bored. But here's the clip 16 times as fast. Scientists believe the sound is a massive iceberg scratching against the ocean floor over a course of seven minutes. And then after seven minutes, it came to a, a halt. But the fact that we hear this sound every year, that's the concerning part. We're like, why is it, is it coming out and then halting again? Cthulhu, is that you or is it a lot of ice melting? Most likely the latter, but who knows? Number seven, whistle. If you can whistle, honestly, hats off to you. I've been trying for years. My lips are too dry and too weak. I have weak lips, apparently. The whistle recorded in July 1997 is not weak, and as this list hint towards, it's certainly not dry. The thing with this mysterious sound is that it was only picked up by one hydrophone, meaning scientists can't pinpoint its location, making this an unexplained sound. It came from somewhere in the Pacific Ocean, so sleep with that in your head. Somewhere, how calming is that? Here's the unidentified sound. What do you think this is? The National Oceanic and the, sorry, the NOAA rather, has compared the sound to some volcanic activity heard in the Mariana Volcanic Arc. But again, we can't pinpoint it at all, so we have no idea. We need three hydrophones to do so. This one was only heard in one. Number six, upsweep. Unidentified yet again. Love to hear it, literally. Sound travels much faster underwater than it does in air, more than four times as fast. So when we hear these noises, one, they're incredibly loud, which is the most impressive part in my opinion, but because sound travels so quickly, it's hard to find out where these calls are coming from. Upsweep is an unidentified sound that was heard throughout the entire Pacific Ocean. When the Pacific Marine Environmental Laboratory fired up its sound surveillance system back in August 1991, these sounds were heard. See, unlike the sounds we've covered so far, this one happens in real time. It's not sped up because it's 17 minutes long, it's just, that's it, that's what it sounded like. These upsweeping sounds lasting a few seconds each ping is definitely concerning. The source was roughly located around New Zealand and South America, somewhere around those places, and it peaks around autumn and spring. So maybe it's just a monster tucking itself in for the winter, and then maybe it's waking back up in spring. Who knows? Scientists at the NOAA have a better idea so far. A little boring, but they believe it's underwater volcanic activity. I say boring, it's not really boring, it's just predictable, I guess. This sound has been getting lower pitched every year, so who knows? Maybe that's a bad thing, maybe it's a good thing. Maybe this thing's gonna go off. Maybe it's gonna go off tomorrow. That was 30 years ago, so any day. Number five, Julia. Who is she? Who is this Julia chick we've been talking about? Julia sounds like a rather friendly addition to this list, but don't let her name fool you. Julia is... Terrifying, definitely, yeah. Back in March 1999, this noise here was recorded again by the NOAA, and this time the noise was heard across the entire Pacific Ocean hydrophone array. So across all that distance, we heard Julia. So whatever made this noise, be it an iceberg, volcanic activity, giant fish from Legend of Zelda, it's got power behind those vocals, you know? She's loud. The point of its origin is determined to be somewhere around Bransfield Straits and Cape Adair. This Cape Adair gets a lot of action in the world, sound-wise and bloop-wise, and we think it's because of icebergs, but maybe the Kraken's name is just Julia. Maybe this is her just slowly introducing herself to the world. Again, it's a long clip in real time, but sped up, sounds like somebody's humming underwater. It's terrifying, take a listen.
This one creeps me out a lot, a lot. I think I've heard the hum before. I don't know, maybe it was Kid Cudi in the distance. Maybe it was this hum. Either way, I'm on board. The hum has been heard for decades now. We have no idea where the hum is coming from. Our best guess is that it has something to do with, of course, as the title hints, the ocean. A resident from Woodland, England spoke out on their experience saying, it vibrates through the house. We've turned all the electricity off in the house and we can still hear it, so it's not that. It's not tinnitus, that's a high pitched sound and this is very low. If I put my fingers in my ears, it stops, so I know it's not in my head. It's heard commonly in Hawaii, Britain, North America, so it's, hey, everywhere. It's been heard everywhere, I guess. Some have called it the Windsor hum, which is insanely close to us, hence why I think I've heard it in real life. I put the microphone to you now, people, the fine people of YouTube. Have you heard the hum? If so, where were you? Comment down below. Number three, 2021 boom. A little bit more recent for this one. Back in early 2021, San Diego residents reacted to what sounded like a sonic boom. Well, it's been heard three times since the initial report. And many still have questions. I have questions. Now you have questions. Windows were shaking, doors were rattling, all of San Diego heard and felt this thing. But what was it? An earthquake? Being in San Diego and all residents are used to earthquakes, but this was entirely different. Everyone felt something new here. Also, it helps to know that no earthquakes were reported at this time, so that theory is just out of the way. And the Marines didn't take responsibility for it as well. And if it was a sonic boom from a plane, well, that would be pretty obvious. We'd kind of have an idea. We'd have a few ideas if it was a plane ripping overhead. Plus, they're not allowed to do that kind of stuff that close to the coast. December 28th, 2021, residents were posting their thoughts on Twitter. One user tweeted, San Diego Diego is cool because I'm like, oh wow, just felt an earthquake, but not actually, it was a sonic boom. Well, keep an ear out for any more mysterious sonic booms coming from the ocean in 2022. The last one wasn't long ago at all. If you live in San Diego, drop us a comment, help us understand what's going on. Number two, the train. This sound was given its name because, well, it sounds like a passing train in the distance. Simple as that, sometimes it's not, you know, scientific. It was first recorded on March 5th, 1997, and it sounds, honestly, it sounds like my PS4. It sounds really loud, it sounds like a really loud, really hot fan that's gonna just, just lift up and take off in the middle of playing Warzone. I'm like, hi, no, come back. Here's the clip. The leading theory as to what's making the sound is not a surprising one. Large icebergs grounding near Ross Sea and Cape Adair. Again, that's probably the most plausible explanation here. Friendly reminder that more than 80% of the ocean is undiscovered, so my only question is, what if it's not? Number one, 52 hertz whale. I love whales because they're the closest thing to a dinosaur, in my opinion. They're massive, we have no idea how they mate, that's still a mystery, we mentioned that in another list. They're beautiful, complex creatures that we should just leave alone, probably, definitely. Especially the 52 Hertz whale, well maybe not too alone, because there's a documentary about this sound. Joshua Zeman made a documentary about the loneliest whale on the planet. Sounds pretty depressing, but it's equally as interesting. For decades now, we've heard this sound. Back in 1989, the US Navy first detected this sound that measured in at more than twice the frequency of a normal, healthy whale call. So this thing's loud. Originally what got them intrigued was the fact that this could have been a military mechanical sound, of course. But then they thought, well maybe it's an animal. Perhaps this is like a new Cthulhu hybrid dinosaur thing that someone's working on. This is a lonely whale, but why is its frequency scaring away possible friends and mates? Mm -hmm. 